alcohol is unique among the psychoactive drugs in that it's one that's legal for individuals who are age 21 or older in the U.S. So it's really ubiquitous in society. It's seen in the media, it's in movies, it's on television, uh, and it is greatly normalized within the adult population. About 80% of U.S. adults drink alcohol, and most of them drink it in a way that's responsible. So it therefore becomes appealing to teens. Uh, they see it as something that'll make them cool and more mature. There's also a natural curiosity about alcohol as an intoxicant. So uh, teenagers experiment with many things, dress, hairstyles, and the use of alcohol becomes another thing for them to experiment with. Uh, what's different about experimentation with alcohol is that adolescents are not so much curious about the taste or consistency as they are curious about what it feels like to get intoxicated, which is what's responsible for the high levels of binge drinking, which are usually defined as five drinks in a row or within a short period of time. Um, adolescents also are inexperienced drinkers, so they don't know how much alcohol it takes to get intoxicated or how much they can drink during a reasonable period of time. So there's always the danger of them unintentionally overdosing themselves with alcohol when they first start drinking. There are two different kinds of parents who provide alcohol for teens. And these are very distinct types of behaviors, and I think that they need to be separated. There are some parents who believe that it's okay for their teenage children to have a drink of alcohol at a social or religious event, for example, a wedding or a glass of wine with a family dinner. And there's no evidence that that kind of provision of alcohol is harmful to teenagers. In fact, one study showed that that may be protective because it removes the forbidden fruit, mystique, of alcohol uh, for young drinkers. On the other hand, there are parents who provide mass quantities of alcohol for their teenagers and their friends to drink at parties. That's enabling behavior. It's very dangerous and it's illegal in many jurisdictions. About 25 percent of teenagers report that their parents provided alcohol for them to drink at a party with friends. I think that there are some parents who are doing this because they want to seem cool uh, to their own teenage children and to their friends and think it's more important that they become uh, a so-called friend to their teenagers. Uh, teenagers already have lots of friends. Now, they only have one set of parents and uh, the parents are really important and one of the things that parents need to do during the teenage year is to set reasonable limits that protect their teenage children. However, uh, I, we don't have studies on this, but my belief in speaking with parents over the many years in my career is that most of those who provide alcohol to their uh, teens to drink at parties think that they're protecting them. Um, they're aware of the dangers of drinking and driving. And so they often will say, I'll provide alcohol for you and your friends to drink in our home and I'll take away all the car keys and your friends will have to stay here overnight or have someone else give them a ride home. It sounds good in theory, but in practice it doesn't work. I have uh, a file full of news clippings that I keep in my office about tragedies that occurred when parents did that. And one instant, a woman provided alcohol for her teenage children and others took away the keys. Um, there was a lake behind her house and three of the teens took a canoe, went out on the lake and they drowned. Uh, another instance, a teenager fell down a flight of stairs and broke her neck after drinking uh, in a home. In another case, uh, a child became intoxicated at one of these events, was walking home and was struck by a vehicle walking home and killed as a result of being intoxicated. So some of the parents are well-intentioned, 
But what they don't understand is they're really increasing the risk for these children despite their best efforts. There are a number of risks to um, drinking during the teenage years. Teenagers are inexperienced drinkers and they generally have low degrees of tolerance to alcohol, which means that they tend to consume large amounts of alcohol over a short period of time to see what it feels like to get intoxicated and they can become dangerously intoxicated or um, develop what's known as alcohol poisoning, a, a medical emergency that will land them in the emergency room. Uh, there are other downsides to alcohol. The leading causes of death among teenagers in the U.S. are accidents, homicides, and suicides. And all three of these major uh, causes of death can be linked directly or indirectly to the use of alcohol. Car accidents or car crashes is probably um, the most obvious example of what can happen when teenagers consume alcohol. There have also been a recent number of studies that have looked at the effects of uh, lower age of onset of drinking. So teenagers who start to drink at age 21 or older have about a 10% risk of becoming an alcoholic later in their lives. Those who start drinking at age 13 or under have an almost 50% chance of becoming an alcoholic later in life. So that's a five-fold increase in the risk of alcoholism uh, depending on the age of first drink. Most teenagers are going to be exposed to this risk at some time uh, during their high school careers. They're going to be invited to another teen's home uh, where alcohol will be provided. One thing that parents need to do with their own children is if their teenage child is invited to a party, they need to call ahead and speak with the parents uh, and make sure that they're going to be home at the time of the event and to make sure that they're not going to be allowing uh, alcohol to be present or any other drug. Even when parents do this, there have been instances where the host parents have said, sure, I'll be home, don't worry about it, and they have lied and then not been there and alcohol and or drugs you know, have been present at the party. So parents need to have conversation with their own teenage children, letting them know that they can call them any hour, day or night, to get safe transportation home from a party and that there'll be no questions asked that evening. They get full immunity you know, with that phone call. And the teenagers have to agree with their parents that if they're in that situation, they will call for a safe ride uh, home rather than staying at the event or allowing someone else who may have been drinking to drive them home.